I'm Nurse Jessica Seitz, along with Nurse Erica. We're Nurses Uncorked, the podcast that takes nursing facts with nursing comedy and makes a little cocktail out of it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Nurses Uncorked. Um, We're coming to you with a special um, episode today. I'm Nurse Jessica Seitz, and I've got Nurse Erica alongside with me, as always, and we're doing a um, special broadcast um, for everybody. Um, we're putting out this episode on a different day, but we felt it was important to get some information out there for everybody to hear. So prior to going on with this podcast, um, Erica and myself felt it was important to put out a trigger warning regarding the details of this episode. We are going to be talking about um, a nurse named Joyce Grayson. Um, who recently was um, murdered in a home that she was visiting as a home health care nurse. Now, some of these details um, can be very graphic, um, explicit details. So this is a warning for anybody that may not want to listen to any more of this podcast that um, we're going to be talking about as much as we know so far about the details surrounding um, the horrible, tragic death of um, Joyce Grayson. So, with that, I'm going to let um, Nurse Erica kind of get into some of the some of the things that she she knows. Thank you. Yeah. So, just to piggyback on that, there have been some details shared with me that uh, are um, sexual assault in nature and uh, very graphic that we'll be discussing later. So, if that is a trigger. This is not your episode. All right. So Joyce Grayson was a 63-year-old nurse in Connecticut. And a few days ago on October 28th, a Saturday, she was going and seeing her patients. Uh, she went to her first patient of the, ha- of the day at 8 a.m. This is um, a-, a man that uh, was recently released from prison. He was uh, incarcerated from 2007 to 2020. He was residing in a halfway house, a halfway house specific for uh, convicted sex offenders, I'm told. Mm. Uh, He has been convicted like at least three times of sexual assault, uh, he nearly stabbed another woman to death in the past. Um, very violent tendencies, uh, you know, just a a very um, unstable, violent person with a known record, okay? And he was in a halfway house as part of a, like, re-entry into the community, society, And he did have an ankle bracelet on, court ordered. And uh, she was part of his care team, you know. I imagine probably there to be doing a, like, case management, uh, behavioral health kind of check-in, which is fairly common Mm. in home health. And uh, she went went at 8 a.m., like I said, and uh, she didn't show up to the rest of her appointments that day. And uh, her family, I believe, became concerned when they couldn't reach her. They tracked her GPS on her phone, but that uh, shut off at 1142 is when they could no longer track the GPS location, but it was still at that home at that time. Oh, I didn't they know contact- that it shut off. Okay. I didn't know that part. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, And so I don't know if that means just that the phone was shut off, if that automatically shuts off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I I guess. If it was broken or. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I don't know if it can still be tracked if it's turned off. I'm not sure. But. Yeah. uh, Family contacted police and the police did go to the home They did not find the patient there at that time. Uh, They ultimately ended up leaving 
a few hours later in the afternoon, I believe around three in the afternoon, uh, they received notification that he had been tampering with his ankle bracelet. So they went back out to the home and they brought canine units and uh, Joyce's scent was tracked from her car, which was parked at a nearby business to the home where it stopped. They did, I believe, on the second visit, find him, the patient. And, you know, I I purposely don't use their names because I don't want to give them any publicity, good or bad, you know. Even though Um, the name is is out there, but. It is. Yeah. It is. I know what you're saying. I'll just be referring to him as the criminal or the patient, whatnot. Okay. Uh, So they did find him leaving the home. They found Joyce's car keys and her credit cards on him, on his person. That's and not good. that's not a good sign. And no. they, I assume, ended up doing a search of the home and located her body in the basement. And she was deceased. Do you know if she had ever been there before, Erica? Like, was this her first time or does that come out? Have you read that anywhere? I, that I am not sure. I know that he had been living at that halfway house since August 2nd. But I don't okay. know if he was. It's possible that he was new to this home health agency. Sometimes patients are you know, kind of jump around for whatever reason to different agencies, that's possible. Or he could have been on service since August. I don't know. That has not been shared. But that's that's a good question. Yeah, re- I would like regardless, to know. And I mean, neither here nor there. I mean, he obviously had a past and a history of sexual <clears throat> assault and you said violent tendencies, you know, so that obviously yeah. can flare up at 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 any point, you know. Um I was just curious if, like, they had built, like, you know, if she knew him well or, or, yeah, like, if he kind of, I mean, who knows if he became infatuated with her or angry with her about something he wasn't getting in his care or, you know, who knows, we may never know, but. I heard from uh, a correctional nurse who apparently um, had him as a patient while he was incarcerated. And Mm -hmm. she reached out to me and said, very violent tendencies. Obviously, he was already, you know, in prison for that. But she reiterated that, no, very, very violent tendencies and specifically towards women. Uh, So let's talk about Joyce for a minute. Uh, We know that she was a celebrated foster parent in the community. Yes, I heard that. She and her husband had reportedly fostered about 35 kids over the years. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then they even won foster parent of the year in 2017. I believe. Oh, gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, I'm told that she had retired. I don't know how long ago or for how long, but she, you know, she was 63. um, And at some point she had retired from nursing or altogether. And for Mm -hmm. whatever reason, went back into nursing, which, you know, that's kind of the running joke with nurses. It's like, we can never really leave. You know, we always, we always kind of get, get sucked, sucked back, back in. in, in some way, shape yeah. or form. And so I don't know what her particular situation was, if it was financial or just that she loved being a nurse or yeah. <clears throat> just wanted to give back. I, I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I do think that that, it just adds another layer of um, kind of tragedy to it that, you know, maybe she shouldn't have even been there. Right. Uh, because she deserves to enjoy her retirement, you know? Right. Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, I'm told that nurses there in Connecticut are, of of course, outraged. 
as are nurses around the country, and especially home health nurses and hospice nurses that also go into patients' homes. I'm told that nurses there in Connecticut are wearing white ribbons. Uh, I I don't know if that's in protest of what happened or in support uh, or remembrance of Joyce, but they are um, showing unity, which I love to see. Mm-hmm. Um, the the officer there, one of them, did give an interview to the media that said it is one of the worst cases he has ever seen in his 27 year long career. Now, mm-hmm. imagine yeah. that, right? For him to they say see that, everything. Yeah, that's a that's a long career yeah. to be. They see law everything. That's a profound statement to me. Uh, one of the worst yes. cases that he's ever seen, you know. Uh, and we'll get into some of that that I've learned. Um, I've also seen that and read that lawmakers there in Connecticut have been meeting um, rather quickly right after this happened, which I'm very impressed by that they I, started yeah, that meeting. I did see that. But I, I think yeah, I read I, one of the lead one of the lead ones is actually a nurse or or was a nurse. Oh, I think. good! I didn't yeah, realize that. one of the lead ones that's really pushing for it. I I had written her name down somewhere, but she actually um, has a nursing background and is still a nurse, but is working now um, on the political side yeah. of things. You know, so that's 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 at amazing. Least good to have one of us on on that yeah. side of things, you know, for once. We so. need more nurses in politics, side note. Um, I've met mm-hmm. recently with my travels, I've met a few nurses that are now in politics uh, in their state, and they're really pushing for reform. We need more of us in there that know, that get it, that understand. And so I'm always very impressed right. when you see a nurse that has transitioned into politics. So Good, good for her, right? her or him. Absolutely. Um, no, it's a her. It's a her. her. I'll, I'll try okay. to look up her name before the end of the podcast to give yeah. her credit for what she's doing. But so they've been meeting um, about these safety concerns specific to home health right. in their community, and they're talking about the possibility of um, instituting some kind of a like mandatory potential escort for nurses or healthcare workers that have to go into the home of these type of patients or situations. So we're going to continue monitoring that. And I really hope that something good comes from that as far as legislation uh, being passed and, you know, providing a certain, there has to be some change. There has to be some good. Yeah. To come I, from like this. I was talking to you yesterday, like to me, it just seemed, like that would be common sense. I, it is crazy to me that that is, I mean, I, I'm not a home health nurse. I've never done home health. So I don't, you know, I know Erica has a yeah background in, in home health. Um, so I can definitely speak to that a lot more, but I would have thought that that totally would have been common sense. Like something that, I mean, you're, you you're dealing think. with somebody that's, yeah, that's on essentially yeah. like a, like a house arrest. I mean, with a bracelet Mm -hmm. that has all these, I mean, the worst kinds of criminal records, sex, I mean, the top ones, violency and sexual assault. Yeah. That like either a, he wouldn't have been taken on as a patient or B in worst case that, okay, we are, but you're going to be protected. You won't go in there alone. You know, I I don't even understand how that is. Uh, yeah. a thing that is just I, I did work uh, in I mean, home kudos health kudos to I, home I health did nurses it. that can do that Whew, it's I don't scary. know how I, I would be scared yeah yeah I, I have some stories it is it is scary I did home health for several years as a CNA a long long time ago and then I did it as an RN for about two and a half years strictly home health case management that's what they call the nurses in home health and hospice, they call them case managers. It's a little um, confusing to those that don't know. And now I work in hospice, which has a lot of overlap with home health. We, the vast majority of hospice patients are treated in their home. So a lot of similarities and a lot of hospice agencies 
are also a home health agency. They'll have like two sides to them, you know. So this is something I'm familiar with. And, uh, you know, referrals come in with an H&P and orders for home health. And it's up to mm -hmm. the individual agency whether or not they want to accept a patient, you know they can certainly turn down a patient and they do often for various reasons, you know, maybe census is just too high. They don't have nurses or um, maybe it's an insurance that they're not contracted with or, or whatever. But the point is it is up to the admitting agency, whether or not they want to accept a patient onto service. <clears throat> excuse me, onto service. I mean, obviously, yeah, you would, you get the history and you get the facts on there to a certain extent. So I am certain that was on there. I mean, I am, uh, I am certain it was, it would have had to have been, I mean, that's an extensive and, and plus he was residing in a halfway house for convicted sex offenders. Like I think it's safe it was to a assume specific house that was, yes, that's what I'm dedicated told. to that type. Okay that population. Yeah. Wow, what a, what a, what a group of people. Goodness Can gracious. You I'd be scared yeah. to even Absolutely. enter the, exactly. the facility I wouldn't. at all. Oh yeah. my gosh. So I, I think it's safe. While I can't say that I know this for certain, I think it's safe to assume that she and the agency was aware of his history, right? You know, you always yeah. get an H and P with admissions. Um, that's a, obviously going to be a huge part of his psychosocial history, which is part of the H and P. Um, and, and especially because he, it seems was being treated for this, like, you know, reentry case management behavior. So obviously that played in, I think it's safe to assume that she knew and the agency knew. So yeah. that kind of opens a Pandora's box of a lot of questions, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I am going to share the name of the home health care agency because it has already been reported widely now in the last day or two in the media. And also because, frankly, I'm pissed and they need to be called out. So yeah. Alara Caring Agency. Um, supposedly it is the Cromwell branch. I think there's several branches uh, there in Connecticut. Um, how how dare you accept a patient with this history? How dare you put a nurse or any healthcare worker in that position? You Absolutely. hold full responsibility for what happened, in my opinion. And I have been told that the family has retained an attorney. Good for them. It is an attorney that Ke specializes. Kelly, Kelly Reardon. Kelly Reardon is her name. Okay. And she specializes yeah. in wrongful death claims. So I, I am happy to hear that. You know, it hasn't even been a week yet. Th this is very new. This just happened. But they know. Um, the family m uh, n must obviously know yes. that this is not right. This is very, yes. very wrong. Now, very wrong. I want to share with you the statement that Alara Caring Home Health uh, made publicly. And it oh, took them boy, a couple of days wait. to even make this, this statement. But, but here you go. The safety and well-being of our team members is our highest priority. We are providing counseling services for Alara team members impacted by this tragedy and will fully be cooperating with the authorities as their investigation continues. That's it. Wow. That's what they had to say. Monumental, what right? About, what about Alara caring, possibly caring for the nurses uh, and not putting them in, in harm's way? I mean, yeah. while the counseling's all well and dandy, that's great. But how about not even getting to that point where nurses need counseling over it? Um, exactly. What? Well, well, that's... <laughs> And a they lame, continue a lame to, attempt at a statement. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's it's just the most generic PR statement that shows how little they actually care. And of course, you know, they they probably I'm sure they know that they're in a potential libel situation and they have to be careful, but that doesn't mean you can't be human. 
you know. Right. That is the right. most generic right. statement I've ever heard. And I've seen where they continue to have ads and posts on social media promoting their business a lot, mm. actually, you know, and recruiting and all of that. And yet we have this one piddly, what is it, three sentence statement from them about the loss of a nurse because of a patient that they accepted on to service. So as you can imagine, um, I have heard from a lot of nurses that either work there now or have worked there in the past, and they're very upset, and they have been sharing things with me. And so I want to share some of these. Uh, okay. Uh, they have been told, allegedly, that they're babies. They're called babies if they refuse to go into a home for safety reasons. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. That's beyond rude. That's... Yeah. Especially now, right? In hindsight. I mean, you know, you know what that I'm thinking shows about you is the like, toxicity. Even in the hospital, though, if somebody's under arrest, they have a police officer there. True. Like, Absolutely. I mean, I, I understand that house arrest, it's not like you're incarcerated. But still, I mean... The the yeah. police there. I, I I really think that a police she she should have had to have had an armed somebody I to agree. go in there with her or at whoever it was that's doing the checks on on the patient. I mean that absolutely. I, I, I mean still in the very least, fathom that. In the very least, it should be you know going in tandem two employees, right? Yeah, Maybe preferably the, a male employee. Yeah, you know schedule it so that. Because, uh, you know, typically it's not just a nurse. There's often also um, social work that will be seeing a patient, maybe a CNA, whoever. There's, you know, the whole team, maybe therapy. So try to schedule together or, you know, just send another nurse, an a C someone, you know, maybe a male. Hell, even someone in the office, like someone Do they tell so that they're you, not going like, in alone. Do you remember, Erica, any ones that you've ever done, like, do they tell you like to maybe to leave the front door open or to only like assess the patient like in the living room or like how does that kind of stuff work? I mean, not that that's going to if there's nobody walking by, I mean, what are you going to do? But um, yeah, or or is that just up to the actual nurse themselves how they handle it? Do you I have think any it's kind of agency agency by agency? But uh, I have wondered that. So if you are in a halfway house, especially one that is specific to convicted sex offenders, don't, wouldn't you assume that there would not be any mm -hmm. going back in a person's private room? Wouldn't you assume that any right. kind of interactions would be taking place like in the living room area, right? That's open. I, unless she had to like use the restroom or something or... Or went to yeah, wash and we don't know. Or... We don't know. Yeah. Maybe that. Maybe that did happen. We don't know. Of course, we weren't there. But uh, I would like to. Or maybe know. he he could have tricked her and acted like he fell. I mean, there could be numerous True. reasons. Like, you know True. what I mean. And as a nurse, yeah. you would respond. I mean, obviously, if you hear yeah. somebody is in pain or something, or who knows, they the criminals are crafty. He could have acted like he fell down the stairs. Or something, or, right? Or said that he had, you know, um, a wound or something in a in a private area that she needed to look. You know, any number of things that you could uh, come up with, right? And now the this he's not the gentleman, which I know we're not saying his name. He's not necessarily old. I mean, right? He's 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 he thirty eight. Yeah, thirty eight years he old. He looks like he's pretty physically. Yeah, I don't want to say like physically fit, yeah, but I mean it not doesn't look frail like a frail by any means, right? Yeah, right. He is in custody. Um, however, he still, as of this morning, to my knowledge, has not been charged in this crime. He's listed as a person of interest, which is crazy. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. Um, but they must know that the you only know, thing it's, I can think him. is because because of how many other sexual offenders are in that true area true. that that might make sense and because true. he's in custody they at least feel a little bit better that they can 
really, really make sure. But I mean, that, I would think that they're, maybe might they're be waiting the for DNA other... evidence. That could be right, it, actually. But yeah, the he fact is being... that he was holding her stuff, um, right, is a little bit, uh, yeah, alarming. You know, that does not give uh, true doesn't bode very well for for no. his story. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you were to find somebody murdered in your house, would you think to put their credit card? In your, I mean, that's just dumb, isn't it? It's right. so dumb. Yeah. I, I yeah. would think so. So I'm just saying the chances of it not, in my opinion, not being him would be very unlikely. Unlikely. Um, I agree. But yeah, they're probably waiting yeah, for very, very some kind of DNA. I imagine that I hadn't thought of that, but that makes sense. Yeah. So he's currently being held for um, larceny possession of drug paraphernalia and violating probation but he is being held on an over one million dollar bond which is high so obviously that you know tells us something uh so he is in custody which is good um yeah some of the other things that nurses have reached out to me and and shared with me that allegedly work there or have worked there in the past is that they've been mm -hmm. begging for security uh, and to them for the agency to not accept these dangerous patients for a long time. They've been begging for this, which is so we hear that every time there is a violent act against a healthcare worker in the aftermath. We always hear from the employees that we've been telling them this was going to happen for years. We've been begging for security for years. And here we go again, just mm -hmm. another example. And they said that they've been ignored with those requests and they've been not only ignored, but ridiculed and treated like they are the problem instead of the agency accepting it and not providing basic security. Right. The nurse. I is mean, the just problem. look at that term, calling them a baby. I mean, yeah. babies because they. Gaslighting <laughs> at its finest. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it, yeah. It, nurses are scared to even. <clears throat> Say how they really feel because it doesn't matter what what it is, whether you're, you know, voicing your opinion about staffing ratios. I mean, you're always yeah. seen as you're you're a complainer, you know, like always suck it up. That's what nurses have to do. Right. You just. Yeah. Suck it up and keep going. They're told that if the patient or the has best is if you don't like it, if you don't like it, get out. Right. Well, if yeah. you don't like it, just don't be a nurse. You knew what you were getting right? into. Yeah, this is part of being a nurse. Yeah, that's what that's part what they do. Calling. It's the constant. Yeah, the calling. Don't even get me started. <laughs> it's, right? it's part of the Jeez. ongoing manipulation, empathy manipulation, and gaslighting that is pervasively used against nurses across the board. Did any of these nurses say anything else? Like, um, aside from being called like a baby, is there anything else that they? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so they've been told that uh, if the patient has Medicare, they have to accept them. That's not true. And I think it's safe to say this patient probably did have Medicare considering his circumstances. Well, do they say you have to because it pays well? Is that why? Well, that, I mean, that's what's their the, reasoning? The reason, really. But they're they're just told. Yeah, of and course it to is. Be, and to be fair, nurses honestly don't typically understand the whole financial billing side of things. So, no. you know, they probably are being told that and just accepting it as like, oh, well, they have to. They don't have to, you know. Yeah. Um of course not. Anybody can be refused. Yeah. I mean, you can accept a patient or not accept a patient. I mean, that's yeah. just you can discharge a patient from your service if you want. I've like, done it. I I have yeah. done that. Yeah. I had a nurse that and nothing even ever happened. It was just kind of a very creepy, uh, I forget if it was a son or a grandson of a patient that lived in the home where she was going that um, was making very inappropriate innuendos. And dis she discovered that he was videoing her on his phone just as she was doing her nursing stuff. And just, it was enough Ew. that, I, you know, I, I fired him. There's there's processes in place that you have to go through, of course. You have to give oh, yeah. them a certain amount of um, warning, you know, and um, you have to sometimes make arrangements for that or give them time so they can make arrangements to get with another provider 
but mm -hmm. you absolutely have the ability to fire patients. But they obviously didn't do that. Why? Because of money, because of money that's safe to assume because God forbid they turn down a referral, which means they turn down some money. That that's mm -hmm. all it is. That's right. all. It, right. You can't tell me it's because they cared so much about this, you know, serial rapist, right? That they wanted him to have proper care. Of course not. It's no. all about the money. That's it. So uh, one nurse told me that, you know, she, she has in the past been held in a patient's home for over two hours and not allowed to leave. I know it's terrifying. By, by the patient? By the patient. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes oh, gosh, it's scary. It's terrifying. Sometimes it's, um, you know, it's not so cut and dry. It's like they want to lock the door on the inside and maybe it's with a key because maybe they live in a bad neighborhood, but it doesn't matter what this, like, if you don't have the ability mm. to leave, that's a problem, right? Another nurse said yeah. that she's um, reported that she's had to go into patients' homes that have guns um, or one that uh, veterans, war vets that have known documented uh, suicidal and homicidal ideations that they oh, are forced wonderful. to go see these patients and not, not only go see them like for an evaluation, but see them three times a week ongoing. Mm. over and over and over again. Uh, they're telling me that they're told, you know, if something happens, just, just call 911. You know, if, if there's a concern, just call 911. Well, how did that serve Joyce? Clearly you can't right. always call 911. And a lot of times patients are in areas where you don't even get service, you know? So some, you couldn't call. That's true. If you wanted that is very to. very true. I've that had patients in remote areas outside of the city uh, where there's no service. Yep. They apparently had a meeting there at uh, the agency with employees after this happened. And the main focus of the meeting was telling them not to comment or post about it on social media. Of course. They always do of that. Of course. They always do that. That's like the Isn't main. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah, it is disgusting because that's all they want to do is save save face and uh, yeah. try not to uh, appear faulty or you know. Yeah, uh, but they're, yeah, they're that's just always worried about the reputation. That's it, mm -hmm. and the way that it might potentially impact them financially, right? If they have a bad reputation. Uh, so no new policies or security measures were allegedly discussed at this meeting. They were told, you know, we have counseling available to you and, you know, just follow your gut. Do what you think is best. Follow your gut. But whatever you do, don't you dare comment or post about it on social media. So basically you can't even speak about your that you lost a fellow nurse mm -hmm. somebody that you care about you can't even right talk about it you can't say nothing you gotta just or talk about how concerned you are for your own safety moving forward because they, they all clearly haven't be. done every anything nurse, they every should be. nurse i mean I, I i know we're highlighting home health right now because that in itself is scary i mean but honestly anywhere i mean but at least at the hospital you have a chance of somebody else hearing you or, you know, right. because there's so many other people around. Yeah. But, you're alone. Home health, in I home mean, health. yeah. And you're not in a it, surrounding you're it. familiar with. It's their territory. Like, that's even Absolutely. scarier. And they can have I mean, weapons that, that you don't know about. They right. have vicious dogs sometimes. They have, you know, the patient might be fine, but then they have a son, a grandson, a father, someone living there that is not fine. You know, and but they live there. I'm surprised right? that there's not like a security officer on duty at these halfway houses. That if knowing a nurse is going in, that they would go. Maybe there, there with is, them, or you, but not that I'm aware. They of. weren't, or they weren't effective I mean, or doing their job. Yeah, and yeah. then they didn't report it either. <laughs> I mean, true. They just true. Went about well. I missed that one. All right. Yeah. I mean, something 
something slipped yeah. big time. Something know, major sure. went went I, astray. Yeah, I mean, because they're they're definitely in a libel position, right? There's there's no way around mm-hmm. it. You know, and let's be let's play devil's advocate. Let's just say, and I don't think that this is true. I don't know that this is true, but let's just say hypothetically that they told Joyce about this situation, that she was fully aware of his history. And they said, you know, it's up to you if you want to go see this patient or not. You know, we're not forcing you. I doubt that. But let's just say that she knowingly accepted the risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Does that absolve? the employer? Absolutely not. You know that he has a repeated documented history of doing this to women. Yeah. Why, why for the love of God, would you even want to take on that risk, putting the company in that libel position? I mean, it's, it's a bad business move, right? Like where was the, the foresight in this, you know? And if, if she did accept it, why then did they not provide someone to go with her or put something into right. place like we need you to call us when you go in we need to know ahead of time what your appointment time is and we you know if we don't hear from you within 30 minutes or whatever you know we're we're calling the police like none of that was in place you know i mean the, the culpability here is is staggering it's mind boggling but it, it, uh, it truly 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 is and i i think home health care nurses everywhere right now well they're sad but they're they're scared they're really scared sure. i mean i know you and, and how many messages be. you've got I, i've gotten messages i can't even imagine your inbox but of these yeah. nurses that are like please like begging please bring awareness to this please something has got to change like the yeah. the this this can't continue this can't i mean yeah i mean it needs to be fixed now not a year from now, not uh, in two years when something maybe finally gets, it needs to be fixed now. Like, absolutely. Or, or nurses need to stand their ground and say, no, I will not. Yes. I absolutely will not go in there alone. Absolutely. I will not, I will not do it. Absolutely. Something's going to have to. And as they retaliate, Joyce isn't going to be the that? last one. No, no, not at all. Um, if they're retaliated, against uh from their employer for refusing an unsafe patient they should be reporting that you know that's illegal retaliation for reporting unsafe conditions is illegal and they can report that to the to osha to the national labor relations board uh but yeah you're right they need to be standing their ground and refusing these known unsafe patients and situations and so the overall consensus from everyone that i've heard of from that company is that all they care about is referrals, AKA money. Right. That's it. That, that, that there is truly no sense of compassion or concern at all that they're all they care about are the referrals. And, you know, of course you're a business and you have to be, you know, fiscally responsible and that's, you know, the purpose ultimately, right. Is to generate revenue, but that doesn't mean you can't be a human being. And you can't do Mm -hmm. the right thing and you can't, you know, provide basic security, right? There's so many things that could have been done to avoid this. So many. So, so many, so many things. Well, it just, you know, is reminding me about all of my crazy stories from when I did home health and I never had anything obviously that bad. Like I was never hurt. Oh, but the one you shared with me the other day was scary. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I had a patient, an old guy lived in a terrible part of town, terrible part of town. Uh, Went there for the first time and he's in an apartment, go in, and he has porn playing on every single TV, like six or seven, like one in the kitchen, one in the living room. Every TV has some kind of porn playing. And I'm like, how awkward, how uncomfortable is going on? Yeah. And then if he I knew has. You, I'm surprised you didn't say this makes me uncomfortable. Can you turn this off? Like I'm so, I, I I'm think so, I was confused at first, and I'm like, maybe it just came on, and he's gonna shut it off. Like, am I seeing what I'm? Am I actually seeing yeah. what I'm seeing? 
and I didn't realize it was on in other rooms until like I went into other, you know, after I'd been there. Um, and it was a long time ago, you know. Um, and then also had bottles of urinal urinals filled to the brim everywhere. Like That's I'm so talking disgusting. thirty urinals sitting on various surfaces all throughout the apartment filled to the brim like you could not even take it and dump it out because it would spill it was so full and then he had clearly run out of urinals and started using like coffee cans and various containers what the Ew. is that what is that why why, why? i mean talk about a creepy why? yeah Did you... and and that's the thing you don't want to like trigger or upset one of these people so like if right. you're to say turn this off or Right. You know, you don't know if that's going to set them off and put them in a, yeah. I mean, you have no power in that situation, really, if they, yeah. if they did snap on you. So I guess you're just like, what, what do I say? Yeah. When I was a CNA doing home health, I was sent to a patient that he was a recovering burn victim. Um, and you know, so my job as the CNA was to help him bathe, obviously, and part of that involves like putting on, you know, lotion afterwards. Right. But, and it was fine. Everything was going fine until, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, um, until he specifically wanted me to rub the lotion in a very specific area that was not affected by burns. If you catch my drift. Oh gosh. That's like the patient yeah. asking you to, uh, or somebody saying, can you adjust my Foley catheter and they don't have one? <laughs> I mean, it, go yeah. it, goes, it goes along with the same thing. I mean, yeah. it's just so gross. I mean, and like you were saying, sometimes, you know, understandably war vets, they have like PTSD. Right. And yeah, they, they could, a noise could set them off or something, you know, sure. it's, it's not to say that they, they necessarily mean that, but it still could happen and people need to be protected. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just the way that it is. Uh, what I was going to say earlier is I think also, and you might have this written down, but um, I think aside from the um, foster children, Joyce also had children of her own, I believe. And she's got grandchildren too. Um, I read that. Um, I'm not sure if she has six children of her own or if it's six altogether between her kids and grandchildren, but, but I did read that. So um Sadly, she's left behind, you know, a family, um, a husband. I can't imagine what they're going through. A lot Especially, of people that loved her. Yeah. In light of um, some other really gruesome details that have been shared with me. And mm. so, um, you know, I want, I want to preface this by saying that this has not been shared publicly. And uh, I obviously cannot confirm this, but I am told from more than one reliable source. Uh, and again, trigger warning, this is where you're going to want to turn, turn off. Um, <clears throat> remember that the law enforcement officer said it was one of the worst cases that he had mm -hmm. seen in his 27 year career. Well, that would right. fit in with that because, uh, what I'm told is that, um, they found that her body had been violently sexually assaulted. Oh, God bless her. Uh, that she had been dismembered and mm. decapitated. Her head was removed. Oh, my God. That is just... Uh, I, I, I have no words for that. That is just... Um beyond oh my lord i mean to lose a family member but then you know to to and i you know they they have to hear the details that's all gonna you know obviously come out and and but how disgusting how horrible just how the fear that this poor poor to woman must have had in those moments. final moments i those, i mean yeah. Uh, I was talking I about it imagine. last night with Masshole, oh, with Matthew, felt. and he had to stop. He's like, I can't, I can't talk about this anymore. It's, it's too upsetting. And it is, it is. It's just, 
to know that your loved one not only was murdered, which is unimaginable in and of itself, but to add this whole other layer of atrocity, I, I cannot imagine. It's absolutely un unconscionable. <sighs> so, <clears throat> my condolences to her family, everybody in her family, her kids, her husband, yeah, and her colleagues, um, her co and anyone her co that yeah, knew her coworkers, her. Uh, everybody, you know, but. You know, like somebody said yesterday, all the condolences in the world aren't going to bring her back. Um, all the trees you know, planted saying, are not going to bring yeah, her back. Stupid, stupid trees. Those stupid we trees. Can, from and and the, that's such a recurring theme. You know, we heard that with with Tristan, Kate Smith, and um, and now this. Apparently, there was thirteen trees. I'm I'm told that were planted and you know it it's a nice thought i suppose but that's not in my opinion where our focus or energy needs to be you know um we we i'm going to get real for a second we need nurses to grow a pair we need nurses to have some courage we need nurses to stand together and refuse these unsafe assignments, patients, situations. I've said it a million times. I'm going to keep saying it. There's power in numbers. If one nurse refuses, they're made an example of. If two nurses refuse, they're made an example of. When the vast majority mm -hmm. refuse, they have no choice but to do something about it. Get out of the break room. Get out of the nurse's station, which is the only place where you sit and complain and bitch in the corner and take a stand for the love of God. Take a stand. I don't want to hear that you're the breadwinner for your family because, again, I've been a single mom since forever and a day. My children's father passed away. It never stopped me from having courage being the only source of income for my family for years. Right. I've always, always stood up. If I can do it, you can too. I don't want to hear your excuses. Nurses are literally dying left and right. This is part of the reason that Masshole yeah. McGuido and I started the red and black ribbon campaign. And, you know, I've got my well, hair so that I wear it it on my forgotten. lanyard. Because so it wouldn't that's be what forgotten. everyone says and is that, it, yeah, the case, it, a week or two will go by and it's not fresh in people's and minds. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. And I know it's they human nature, like, it. right, because nothing's changing and nothing's done and people go about their lives again. And, um, yeah, yes, you're right. That is, it's a reminder to not forget. We still have a fight. We have to, a huge we have fight. To fight. We have to remember what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I want to also say that I know it's, it seems to unfortunately be trendy right now for, uh, nurse influencers to talk about the violence against nurses suddenly. This has been going on for years. I personally sent those red and black ribbons a year ago to the vast majority of nurse influencers out there on my own dime. I can count mm -hmm. on less than one hand the amount who ever wore it or spoke about it. They, they don't care. It, they're literally using this for their own platform, for the views. And it, it really disgusts me. You know, if that you cared, you thing. would have been talking about it at Methodist Dallas a year ago. You would have been talking about it at every, I have a whole playlist on TikTok going back years of all the violence against healthcare workers, right? That I've talked about in real time when they happened. I've called for change. Mm -hmm. I've co-created this movement. I've, you know, the legislation, I do all these things. Well, all of a sudden it's trendy. And all of a sudden you see nurses talking about it. Like this just started happening. Stop it. Stop it. Be for real. Do something that's to enact one thing, change. That's one thing I want to say about Erica is that she's always reporting on stuff, even when there's not a big story in the news. There's not like some tragic event. Like that's, she's constantly following, following legislation, things that may seem boring to other people. You know, that is definitely one thing I will say 
there's not many um, social media influencers that do that. A lot of them will just hop on the bandwagon and um, post for a day or two about what's happened um, and then move Thank on you. back to their normal their normal content. But I will say yeah. that uh, you don't forget. And, and there's a, there's a few you. other people like you. Mass Hole is like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not, yeah. there's not many, that's for sure. Um, so you're right that it is, that it's, it's easily forgotten, um, until the next tragedy and yeah. that stop forgetting about sad. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ab we, we've absolutely. got to pass the legislation, um, the workplace violence act that has been sitting there going nowhere. Um, we've got to collectively refuse these things and demand change and, um, one of the ways is by, you know, wearing some kind of red and black, right? Every day, a ribbon, whatever you can do to take a stand, to collectively say, I, I'm not going to tolerate this. And to start those conversations because patients, visitors see them and they ask, what is that? What does that mean? Oh, well, did you know that there's actually like an epidemic of violence against healthcare workers? Da, 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 da. You know, it starts the conversation. Um, pressuring your legislators to pass the Workplace Violence Act. I've got that on my playlist. If you want more information about it, I've got templates. Um, and refusing collectively. And here's the, here's the other thing. Back up the nurse. If you're not the nurse that has courage to do this, but your coworker does, back them up. Back mm -hmm. them up. Because when they're made an example of, one day it's going to be you. One day you're the yep. one that's going to be made an example of. Back them up. And I guarantee you, you know, the higher ups don't don't care about you. They don't. They really they don't. sadly don't. <clears throat> so unless we all stick together and band together, it's very easily to intimidate somebody back into doing what you want them to do. You know? Yeah. Um, so we have to. We have to stand up and stand for each other and 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 do something, you know? I mean, I know a lot more is going to come out about this story in the next I'm sure. weeks that follow, I'm sure, you know. Um and I Her know Eric will be following it closely. Today. Yes. Oh, I it's will. today. Okay. It's today. Well, my yeah. thoughts are with the with the family, even though I know that's mm -hmm. sadly not going to bring her back, but um maybe we can make change and God, I feel like we just keep saying this, Erica, not let somebody's death go in vain, but we keep saying it, but over and um, over and over again. So well, we had already taped um, or recorded a couple of podcasts earlier this week, and we weren't planning on doing another one. And uh, this happened and we thought, you know what, we need to talk about this talk because about just like you said, a week from now, people will have forgotten and don't care anymore, and they won't be talking about it. So we, you know, put everything we aside to this morning to do this and get it out there. Make your um, own black and red ribbon. Like, let's yeah. bring awareness. Yeah. Like, you know, doesn't have to yeah. be anything fancy. Just uh, right. black and red, like, loop together um, mm -hmm. to represent uh, workplace violence and the violence that is happening against um, healthcare workers constantly. That's right. Um, and let's, let's, let's do something. Let's make a change. Let's, let's, I and, know, maybe. and be real about it. It's not a trend. It, it you know, don't use this. Yeah. It's not a trend for the moment. Like actually support it. All right. Till next time. Unless till you have anything time. else, Erica, you want to add, or are we sadly no, wrapping no, this up? I, I think, I think that's plenty. Unfortunately. Yeah, I agree too. All right. Till next time on the next Nurses Uncorked.